I've been using Coda for almost three years now. Does that mean it's gonna take you three years to be proficient in Coda? No. So let's talk about some resources to help you rapidly excel. First, let's talk about video content. For some reason, Coda hasn't published their videos publicly. They're all unlisted. But if you go to the Coda resources tab, we have a bunch of guides to get you started wherever you're at with Coda. They have some really nice courses. They have Coda 101, 201, all the way up. And then they have specific formula and database courses that are super important. If you've never structured a database before, if you're not really familiar with all the formulas, these videos are a godsend. They'll really help you with the mindset that you need in order to get started with Coda. Within each of the courses, you have a ton of videos that go over the very specifics of Coda. So if you're trying to learn it really fast, go through all of these courses and in maybe two, three hours, you'll feel like you're an expert already. If you finished all of those tutorials and you're ready for something that's a little bit more advanced, there's some great content creators out there. First, there's a creator called Coda Tricks. He has some great tutorials, they're all packed with content, and there's a lot of little niche things that you didn't know about that end up making a huge difference in the process of building a custom document. Another super great content creator is the Coda Guy. He really specializes in just being charming. I mean, honestly, who couldn't love a face like this? Now, Scott does touch on some pretty advanced topics as well, but there's some more intermediate stuff. So if you're kind of in the middle on where you're at with learning Coda, uh, I would definitely check him out. I wanna specifically mention one video that's uploaded on the Coda YouTube channel. It's by a man named Martin, and he's built his entire business on Coda. It's a very, very insightful video. And if you're wondering about the power of Coda and what it can truly give to you and your organization, I encourage you to watch it. Moving on from videos, the next really big topic is the Coda community. It's inevitable that if you're working within a Coda doc, there's gonna be some sort of problem that you have that you just cannot figure out. You'll look on YouTube, you'll do Google searches, you'll even chat GBT it to try to figure out the answer. And no matter what, there's gonna be no answer. But if you post it on the Coda community, you'll have your best chances there. There's a ton of posts every day, ton of conversations every day, just about little things working or not working within Coda. And there's a great community behind it. Let's take a look at this sample post. This person needs help with a numbered list. They need to make it into an actual Coda list. You'll see it, the answer that was given is just so in-depth. People give uh, really in-depth answers with pictures, images, and there's a cool feature within Coda where you can share your Coda doc so that anyone can edit it. And this is great if you have a specific issue that's specific to your use case. You can share that document, people can access it, and then make whatever changes they need to so that it's reflected within your workspace. I've created a sample document. Let's say I was having issues with this formula and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't resulting true. If I were to share this to the Coda community, I just go up to share, and then you'll see this option here, anyone with a link, we're gonna turn this can edit, we're gonna copy the link, and whenever we go back to the Coda community, we can create a new topic, we're gonna have this under the ask the community. We're gonna type whatever our question is. And for the details, we'll wanna be as specific as possible. So describe whatever your problem is. And then you're gonna to wanna to attach that URL that we just copied. When someone is logged in on the forum, it'll auto log them into whatever document that you've pasted there. And then they'll be able to edit that document. So if you have crucial information in there, it's probably not recommended to share your document because then anyone will have access to that information. But what you can do is copy the specific portion that you're having an issue with, and then put that into a new document, share that document, and then whenever someone has an answer for you, you're able to implement that into the one that you're trying to figure out. I can't even tell you how many times I've had an issue that was fixed because I posted it to the community, and it was something that I just overlooked. So in terms of learning, really the video content and then the Coda community are the two big things that you're gonna need in order to be successful with building all of your documents. But let's look at some little things. You'll see whenever we try adding an icon here, we'll get a list of different icons, but there's no real easy way to actually view all of the icons that are in your inventory. What Coda's using is actually an icon pack that's by a website called Icons8. I'll have a link in the description so you can easily click on it and find it. But if you're trying to Google it and find it, just search in Icons8 colored and then click on the first link and these color icons are the exact icons that code is using you'll see down here we're selected on that color tab 
So Icons 8 has a bunch of different styles, but they use only the color ones specifically. And if you're just trying to browse through the icons just to see what icons you have available, just make sure you're selected on color, make sure there's nothing in the search box, and you can search by category. And let me tell you, there's a ton of icons. Coda hasn't quite updated to use the entire icon set, but about 90% of them are usable. So feel free to just browse through and kind of get a good idea of what icons you can use. This next one isn't related to Coda at all, but it's the Lorem Ipsum Generator. This is useful if you're trying to mock up any pages to see how your text formatting is gonna look, or if you just need some quick sample data, you can go here, quickly copy all of the content, or just select however much you think you'll need, right click, copy, go back to your doc, you can paste it and see how the formatting is going to look. I tend to use this just so I can see how the doc's going to look before I actually write everything up and spend all the time to make everything finalized. And then usually once I'm done with the doc, then I'll go back and replace all of the lorem ipsum text with actual text. The last page that I want to bring light to is the Coda API key page. If you've ever used Crossdoc, you'll notice that it brings up a little pop-up and asks you to either give a barrier key to authenticate your connection, or you can click a button to just generate a new one. But where do all of those authentication keys live? Well, if you're in a doc, click on your profile icon, then you'll click on account settings. And then on the account page, if we scroll all the way down, we'll see a ton of API keys. You'll notice mine is not very well maintained because I didn't even know for the longest time that this is where all of your authentication keys were stored, but this is where they're at. If you ever need to delete an authentication token or delete a connection that you have already established, you can go within here. Hopefully you remember the name, but if not, you can kind of guess what the key is based on whenever you added it. If you need to delete the connection, you can delete the token and then anytime that specific call is made again, or if you're trying to connect to that service again, that token will be deleted. So hopefully that connection is broken. Okay, so I'm editing the video now and I realized I left out probably the most important link out of all of this, which is the Coda formula list. This is super helpful if you're trying to figure out what formula to use, but you don't exactly know what the formula is called or exactly how to use its parameters. In the formula list website, it'll give you an example of how to use it and then some dummy data so you can exactly see how the result's supposed to turn out. In my first year of actually using Coda, I probably referenced this every single time that I was in Coda. It's super helpful and it's very clear on what all the functions do. Okay, back to the video. Again, if you're just starting out with Coda, I encourage you to watch all of those official Coda tutorials. Just make sure to go to their website. It'll be in the link in the description as well. But look at all of the Coda 101 through 301 courses. Make sure to not skip out on the database and the formula courses. Those are super important if you want to make meaningful changes within Coda. And if you're looking for something more advanced, definitely check out Coda Tricks and Scott the Coda Guy. Then there's the Coda community. If you're really looking to get proficient in Coda, I encourage you to just browse this every day. Look at some of the topics, look at how people are answering some of the questions. If you notice the topic is about something that you don't even know about, just click on it and take a second to read all of the content. And 90% of the questions get a solution. So it's a great place for learning. But that's about it. I really hope this helps. If you are in need of a Coda expert and need help developing your own doc or a custom doc or customizing one that you've already built, I have a link in the description where you can submit a custom request. Just make sure to fill out all of the details that are relevant to that project and I'll be in touch with you. But that's about it. Thanks for watching.